How was our universe born? And if this seems hard to answer, then how about this? What was before our universe? While scientists are looking for the answer to the most difficult question in history, let's find out what they've come up with so far. In the 20th century, we've shed the light on this mystery, all thanks to this man, Edwin Hubble. One day on Mount Wilson in Southern California, he aimed his telescope at the sky and found out that these random clouds of gas flying everywhere are actually other galaxies. And there are a lot of them. And also, he learned something else, something that changed the world forever. They're moving. So what, you may ask? Well, it meant one very important thing. The universe is expanding. And if it's expanding, then it probably had a beginning somewhere, right? Now, all we have to do is run time backwards and see where the beginning was. It took the scientists many more years to come up with a full-fledged theory, the Big Bang Theory. And here it is. Nothing has ever been anywhere because neither when nor where existed. Do you get it? But actually, no, there was one thing. It was the so-called cosmic singularity, a state of our universe in which it was incredibly small, dense, and very hot. Imagine if our universe was compressed into a small ball. The pressure and temperature inside would be enormous. At some point, it became impossible to withstand them. And here comes the Big Bang. It was an outburst of energy and matter that created everything we see now. Time and space, basic physical forces. It also scattered quarks everywhere. These quarks, tiny particles that make up our world, were all boiling in an incredibly hot cosmic broth. When it cooled down, gravity began to attract them to each other. They gathered into atoms, then molecules, and then into the first objects into the world, stars. And all this happened just some 12 to 14 billion years ago. All right, now we know how our universe was created, but what was before that? Alan Harvey Guth, an American theoretical physicist and cosmologist, has devoted his whole life to solving this mystery. After learning about the Big Bang Theory, Guth found some flaws in it. For example, the distribution of matter was very even, although it shouldn't have been. Let's hang a balloon filled with paint to the ceiling and lay a white canvas on the floor. If we drop the balloon down, it will burst and we'll see absolute chaos on the canvas. A bunch of spots scattered everywhere randomly. Neither is like the other. But that's not really what the universe looked like. Instead of throwing a colored ball from the ceiling, let's draw a small red dot on the canvas. Now let's expand it a little more and more and capture this all on frame by frame shooting we'll see a circle gradually growing in all directions. That's the reality. The early universe was very even and proportional. That was Guth's discovery, the theory of inflation. Here's what it says. Even before the Big Bang, there was some kind of force that could give the bang a strong acceleration, something that was able to distribute everything in space instantly and evenly. Guth's theory was a success, and now most scientists rely on it. For most of them, this idea of the birth of the universe is quite enough. For most, but not for all. Martin Bojewald is a German professor of physics, and in his opinion, the universe was born quite differently. Remember when we talked about cosmic singularity? The state of the universe in which it was small, infinitely dense, and super hot. According to Martin's theory, the singularity couldn't just appear out of nowhere. This is nonsense. But then, where did it come from? Let's look at a pendulum on an old clock. The pendulum rotates back and forth. Its movement is smooth, continuous, and non-stop. This is how we usually see time. It flows and never stops. But quantum time, ho ho, quantum time doesn't work that way. It's more like the second hand of a clock. 
it consists of small segments and makes short pauses. And, just like with the second hand of a clock, the beginning of one segment of time is always the end of another. See what I'm getting at? Let's go back to balloons again. According to the Big Bang Theory, once upon a time, our universe began to expand, inflate like a balloon. But sooner or later, it will blow away back. The universe will start shrinking and return to the state of cosmic singularity. And then guess what? The Big Bang 2. Nothing appears out of nowhere and disappears into nowhere. According to Bojewald's theory, the beginning of each universe is the end of the previous one. Our universe is not at all the first and not the last. Millions of similar universes existed before us and will exist after us. This theory, although it sounds very logical, is far from complete. Unfortunately, we don't have enough knowledge to find all the evidence for it. So for now, all this is just a hypothesis. But some people come up with even stranger ideas. Scientists promote such unusual theories that no one could even think of. Neil Turok, a South African physicist, and his colleague, Paul Steinhardt, an American theoretical physicist, look for answers far beyond our universe. They say that yes, our universe isn't the first one. There have been and will be an infinite number of them. And not only will there be endless Big Bangs, our universe is just one of an infinite number of others. And all of us are stuck in a cycle of endless rebirths of parallel worlds. This sounds incredible and frightening at the same time. But how does it work? According to this theory, our universe is located inside a so-called brain, as in membrane. In other words, we're stuck in some kind of elastic surface that's capable of contracting, stretching, oscillating, and so on. Like pieces of fabric on a rope, these parallel universes are located near each other. Each one has a neighbor. We're not the exception. Another universe may be an inch from ours, but we can't see it. That's because there's a tiny space between us, and this tiny space contains the fourth dimension. How do these universes originate? Through brain collision. These brains are getting closer to each other very, very slowly, until one day they finally collide. Their collision creates two big bangs and two parallel universes. Then they're moving away from each other. The created worlds continue to live, we're currently at this stage, but when they disappear, the brains collide again, and this will lead to the birth of a new universe. Remember the inflation theory? There was a mysterious energy that pushed and accelerated the Big Bang. Well, if we did collide with another universe, that would explain everything. Of course, everything described here is a great simplification. When you hear that our world is some piece of fabric on a rope, it sounds like complete nonsense. But this idea is based on string theory and M theory, two giants of quantum mechanics. If they turn out to be true, they could explain almost everything in our universe. Creating a theory is an incredibly huge process. Turok and Steinhardt made a huge amount of calculations and swept away many, many non-working theories. Also, to work this out, they have to overcome the limits of the human mind and think in 11 dimensions at once. Unfortunately, this crazy and elegant idea was laughed at. Turok and Steinhardt say that scientists are regular people, just like everyone else. They're also afraid of change and the unknown. And it's really scary to question everything we once believed in. Many years ago, people didn't believe that the Earth was round. Then, they were outraged by the Big Bang Theory. We can't make discoveries without struggle and fear. That's why Turok and Steinhardt don't plan to give up so easily. After all, the evidence that we have now only says that each of the three theories is equally possible. So which answer is correct? We may never know, at least not at this stage of human development. Unfortunately, as long as we have no evidence, we can only theorize. But maybe one day we'll find something that will open our eyes once and for all. Maybe one day we'll solve the mystery of how our universe came to be.
So, are you tired of boring old Earth? Want to know what lies beyond the starry night sky? You're not the only one. People have been asking the same question for centuries. Luckily, scientists have got you covered. They've discovered a lot of amazing places light years away from our blue planet. Just one light year is about 6 trillion miles. Mind blowing, huh? So, hop on! The spaceship of knowledge is lifting off. Your first stop is 2.5 billion light years away from Earth. It's a quasar, one of the brightest objects in the universe and the first one to be discovered. A quasar isn't a star, but a distant galaxy. This extremely bright object gets its power from a supermassive black hole. A disk of matter swirls around the black hole and creates friction. It's kind of like when you're cold and rub your hands together to stay warm. The friction between the palms creates heat, making you feel nice and cozy. The same happens in the quasar, just the amount of heat is bigger, way bigger. I hope you remember to pack sunscreen lotion. The temperature at the heart of this quasar can reach 18 trillion degrees Fahrenheit. Also, there is light, a lot of it. This celestial object shines a hundred times brighter than all the stars in its galaxy put together. Well, it's time to cool down a bit. Minus 457 degrees Fahrenheit, to be precise. This is the temperature of a young planetary nebula called the Boomerang Nebula. It sits 5,000 light years away from Earth. NASA's Hubble telescope caught images of the formation in 1998. It's composed of gas coming from a star near the end of its life cycle. Inside the nebula, it's windier than in the Windy City. Winds reach speeds up to 310,000 miles per hour. And you gotta thank them for the nebula's chilling temperatures. Researchers were just impressed to find out that the temperature of the Boomerang Nebula is just 1 degree above absolute zero. Zero Kelvin should be the coldest temperature possible. This is the point where all molecular and atomic activity stops. Brr! Makes you want to crank up the thermostat in your spaceship. Next, you're going to a place you might not want to visit. Sorry. So, it's the most massive black hole. This giant is located at the heart of a large galaxy, some 10.4 billion light years from our planet. Its mass is 66 billion times greater than that of the Sun, enough to make our galaxy's supermassive black hole feel ashamed. It has a mass of merely 4.5 million times that of the Sun. But you better not get near any of them as a black hole's diet consists of matter. By calculating how much matter they consume, scientists can determine their rate of expansion. And those black holes have quite an appetite. Astronomers believe there are stupendously large black holes, or slabs, hiding somewhere in the universe. If they're real, their mass is estimated to be greater than 100 billion times that of the Sun. Now, it's time to snack on something lighter. The spaceship enters the Kepler-51 system. It's home to the lightest planets in the known universe, called super puffs. Sounds fluffy enough, and it is. These planets' mass is either the same or slightly greater than that of Earth. But this doesn't mean they're small. Think of them as giant cotton candies the size of Jupiter. They are newly born planets whose atmosphere is still cooling down. You might want to wait for this process to be over, though, as 500 degrees Fahrenheit is too hot to handle. But for experts, super puffs are special. These planets are incredibly rare, as they've managed to discover less than 20 so far. Now, are you up for a race? Let's say the ship you're on is traveling at a speed of 25,000 miles per hour. This is the current human speed record. It was set by NASA's astronaut TRIO from the Apollo 10 mission in 1969. And no, I am not talking about Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. That was the Apollo 11 mission later that year. Right now, you're going to race against a star 18,000 light years from Earth. Your biggest advantage is that this is a neutron star. It was formed when another massive star ran out of nuclear fuel and couldn't support itself anymore. Think of a car running on an empty tank. Victory couldn't be any closer, right? Well, not quite. When a massive star feels like its time is up, it shrinks and starts spinning. Figure skaters do the same during a spin. They fold in their arms to increase rotation to the maximum. 
This neutron star is the champion of the universe. It spins at a speed of 157 million miles per hour. That's roughly 27% of the speed of light. Whoa! Are you running low on energy at this point? Time to charge up from a gamma ray burst. Gamma rays are electromagnetic waves generated by various forms of radiation. These bursts were fairly unknown to science until the late 1960s. Satellites equipped with gamma ray detectors accidentally recorded huge outbursts of radiation outside of our solar system. What were they? Nothing dark, definitely, as these are the most energetic forms of light. Scientists believe that gamma ray bursts happen when two neutron stars collide and form a black hole. The other explanation is that they are in the final stage in the life of a supernova. This event happens when a star decides to go out with a bang. Gamma ray bursts shine brighter than a diamond. They are a million trillion times brighter than the sun. Talk about an energy boost. Ah, your mood is lightened up by now. You want to visit a place that has a draw to it. No, it's not a beach resort, but a magnetar. It's a neutron star with a twist. Magnetars have a magnetic field that is a trillion times stronger than that on our planet. But don't fall for their strong appeal. Let's just say you won't live to tell a tale if you get too close to one. In 2004, a flare that came off the surface of a magnetar managed to compress Earth's magnetic field from a distance of 50,000 light years. Quite impressive for a star the size of a city. Makes you wish to team up with this oversized magnet to commit the greatest heist ever. A magnetar has the ability to swipe all the credit cards on planet Earth from a distance halfway to the moon. Luckily for humans, NASA has discovered only 31 of these stars so far. You have barely escaped the pull of a magnetar. Suddenly, you start to sense a strange force drawing you away from your home base. It is the Great Attractor, one of the biggest mysteries of the universe. This massive gravitational irregularity has been pulling us closer and closer to it for billions of years. Scientists estimate that the Great Attractor is located at the center of the Linnea Kea supercluster. The name means immeasurable heaven in Hawaiian. It represents a gigantic collection of planets, stars, and asteroids. Our home galaxy, the Milky Way, is just a speck in this enormous supercluster. According to the Big Bang Theory, not the TV show, the real theory, the universe has been expanding in all directions. But the mysterious Great Attractor is slowing things down. How exactly? Researchers still need to figure this one out. On the bright side, they are good at naming things the end of the universe would be called the Big Crunch, if there's anyone left to call it that. Your journey, too, ends at the edge of the universe. The most distant galaxy from Earth is the oldest one as well. The galaxies that formed first after the Big Bang have drifted the furthest. So every time advanced telescopes detect a far, far away dot, they give scientists an image of the origins of the universe.